Hey, what's going on YouTube? My name is Chad, this is Wisco Boater Channel. Welcome back to another episode of uh, some work on Clifford. Starting out here in my kitchen at home, I was just delivered an Amazon box. So I'm gonna open this up and show you what little bit of goodiness I have in here. And then uh, I'll make my way up Sturgeon Bay here and I'm gonna do the, uh, uh, the dash panel reinstallation, the switch and circuit breaker panel reinstall uh, planning on pulling the props from the drive. I did have the drive serviced. I'll talk about that when I'm up there. And I also am going to try and get the red gel coat polished. So I'm gonna compound and wax it, hopefully over the course of 24 hours of being up there. So let's get this box open. I'll show you what I got here. All right, box is open. And... Look at that. Got a beautiful new steering wheel. The steering wheel on the boat's fine. Uh, I just am not a fan of wood trim. I think I mentioned that in videos in the past, which is one reason I overhauled the dash. Not only did it look like crap, but it was wood finished and I didn't want to keep that wood finishing. So with the dash panels refinished in red, I uh, wanted to get rid of the steering wheel, which is has wood, you know, replica wood uh, rim on it. So I bought a universal uh, marine steering wheel off of Amazon. Very nice looking wheel. Uh, excellent reviews on this. It's from Seastar. This steering wheel is a little more expensive than I probably was looking to spend on a steering wheel. This, this was $100. So um, if you... Uh, you're looking around for the steering wheel that's what you're gonna pay i think it was 93 plus tax so 100 bucks um with prime shipping so i'm really really excited about this steering wheel i think it's gonna look awesome on the boat and i uh, can't wait to get this installed you can see it's got uh, three keyways in there so that you can make sure and line up the spokes with uh, um, straight uh, straight drive position so this will be fun. I'm looking forward to getting this installed. Uh, let's go look at uh, the polish that I got for Christmas as well as the uh, polisher that I'll be using. And after that, it's time to go. All right, I am out in the shop getting some things ready. Um, in addition to the steering wheel, I'll be taking up there with me. I'll be taking up my new DeWalt polisher. Got two polishing pads. Uh, these are Makita's wool polishing pads that fit the uh, have the seven inch pad in there I've got a pad cleaner and I will be using aqua buff um, I've got aqua buff 1000 this is the fast cut compound and then 2000 is the uh, compound and polish uh, that'll be the second coat so I've got one pad for two, 1000 one pad for 2000 and then when I'm done with that if I don't have quite the shine that I want, I will be also using uh, some flits. I've got some polishing balls and uh, two cans of uh, flits polish that I'll go over the entire boat with if I don't get exactly what I'm looking for out of this. I think I will though. This stuff is really, really good stuff. Uh, Brittany got that for Christmas for me. Brittany's parents got this for Christmas for me and I added the pads and the pad cleaner. So with that said, Time to load everything up and head up Sturgeon Bay. Spend a couple days up there and, uh, well, two days, one night. Uh, probably gonna be about a 24 hour trip, but hoping to get a bunch of stuff done while I'm up there. All right, well, I am uh, up here in Sturgeon Bay. Uh, didn't, uh, no reason to record the drive, uh, but just got up here and um, I've got a truckload full of stuff to take inside. We got the dash pieces, the switch panels, steering wheel, polishing stuff lights all that stuff's got to go in so i'm gonna carry that in and uh spend a half a day getting uh, some stuff done here all right well there's plenty of snow on the ground here let's go inside and warm up a little bit Okay, I've got my drive pulled. 
waiting on a uh, new U-joint. Uh, one of the rings had worn a little bit of groove in it, was leaking some oil, so I got everything pulled. A little better view here with the light turned on. You can see the oil that's inside the bellow there uh, should not be there. So that's what, uh, there's a seal inside here that ended up uh, being worn and so that's what they got to fix that is that's what the inside of a Bravo 3 drive looks like the gearing anyway uh, so there's a u-joint that is being replaced one thing I'm not going to do that I was planning on doing while I was up here is pulling these props. Um, I, the tool that I need did not come in in time, so I'm just going to concentrate on getting the dash back together and then working on this. So let's get the cover pulled back and start playing with some wiring. Okay, mid-afternoon update here. Got the uh, binnacle in. Looks great. Next is going to be the uh, switch panels. And all this associated wiring here that I gotta put back together. That looks super nice. Okay, the nest of wires all put back together. And this panel, this was not connected before. So, just have one last look here. Don't see anything disconnected. in there like that put a plate over this here I've got a stereo head that I might put in here but for now it's just gonna stay open okay the other panels done um, got no extra wires so this can be dropped in place and we gotta make sure we have room for the Two wires for the GPS. All right, right like that. I'll get some screws and put that down. All right, well, the lighting is uh, pretty bad here. I'm trying to be a little bit quiet too because there's several other people working in here today and it's like super quiet. So the panels look really, really awesome. Um, I'm gonna run over to the service office and see if they have a puller that I can borrow for the steering wheel and get that done, so. Man, this looks so much better. Okay, so I got the battery turned on and we'll just go down the line here. A little beep of the horn. <coughs> Works. Got, well, can't see the anchor lights up there, but see these come on. That's good. Cockpit lights. All working. Uh, there is no windlass. That's not even hooked up. No, that's not hooked up. Deck lights. You can kind of see them up there. Let me zoom in. There we go. And what's next? Uh, the wiper I'm not going to try right now because the cover's in the way. Bilge pump. I think I can hear it. And then blower. All right. So as long as the uh, ignition works, whenever it <laughs> comes back time around to put the boat in the water, I've got everything wired up right. So sad up here in the winter time. All these boats just sit out, collect snow, the uh, marina, it's all covered in ice. It is pretty. Let's go take a drive through the yard. I'm just 
just make a circle drive through the yard over here. I did go and look at a boat today. I looked at a main ship 34, which is pictured right here. This is a really, really nice boat. And I actually would be interested in trading my boat, the Regal, for this one, if the timing was right. It's not to say the timing isn't right, but it's not perfect right now. But I am gonna to talk to Brittany about this a little bit. This boat right here, that's a Bertram 46 to 1977. That boat's for sale also. I thought about looking at it, but it's just, the layout isn't quite right for the cabins. Not, not a real big fan of how the cabin um, and salon are set up in that boat. So anyway, back to the main ship. This boat does have the layout that I want. And it's a 1996 model. Hour wise, about the same on both the engines as my boat. 575 hours on either side and mine's got 596 so about the same engine wise and uh, just a lot more room it's a 13 and a half foot beam which would be an amazing step up for over what we have it's only about five feet longer but 13 and a half feet wide versus eight and a half feet wide is massive it is a big time difference so we're going to talk about it this boat right here is pretty cool. And uh, zoom. There we go. Momentum. Nice sailboat. And just a bunch of other sailboats and cruisers. There's uh, Those are new boats there that are for sale. Well, they sit over the winter and don't do anything. But those are all inventory boats for skipper buds. So... Just thought I would show up pretty it is here. It's kind of uh, it's kind of weird being in a shipyard in the winter time outside. Um, you know, inside the buildings is different. Obviously people are working on their boats and stuff's going on, but these boats here that just sit outside all winter long, it's just kind of spooky. Kind of weird. Anyway, day one is uh, done. It's only about 4.30, it's starting to get dark and they lock the buildings at 4.45. So um, it is 4.37 right now. So I'm out of the building and uh, I think I'm gonna go over and see a buddy of mine and uh, have some dinner, drink a couple beers and then head out to the, uh, the cottage. But once I get out to the cottage though, there is no internet, no TV, no cell service. So I'm gonna try to plan tonight um, around just going there to sleep. So tomorrow when I go back to the building, I will, I'll, I'll try to video some more. I didn't really video very much today just because putting the panels back in was very tedious work. Uh, putting all the wires back together uh, or back on their, um, terminals on the circuit breakers and putting the fast ons on the switches it's super super tedious and honestly really boring video so i think the uh, panels look fantastic in position uh or mounted and tomorrow morning um hoping we'll get the steering wheel replaced i did get the wheel part pulled off but the hub is still on there so I gotta figure out how to pull the hub and I'm actually gonna have a technician come over from Skipper Buds and help me with that tomorrow because I don't wanna break anything. I'll do that tomorrow and then I will um, work on the boat polish. So I'm gonna use the new polisher and the Aqua 1000 and 2000 and get the red done. Uh, probably won't have time to do the white but I do intend to get the red polished tomorrow, compound and waxed. Uh, and then I'll have to head back down uh, down home. So I think I mentioned a little while ago, I am not pulling the propellers on this trip. Um, I wanted to, but the tool, the wrench didn't arrive in time. So I'll just do that next month when we're back up here. Plus the drive is off anyway, as you saw. Um, I don't wanna go pulling propellers off when the drive is off because 
I don't want to mess anything else up. So it's a beautiful evening here in Sturgeon Bay. Uh, I'm going to show you the shipyard here, not the shipyard I was just at, but the uh, uh, Bay Shipbuilders shipyard where there are eight interlake steamships in uh, winter layup. Won't be able to see all of them because uh, uh, some of them are blocked by the others, but it is pretty cool to see. So across the way over there, across the frozen waters, is uh, Bay Shipbuilders. And you can see there are two on the end there. Uh, then there's three, there's four back there, five. And then you can see the sixth pilot house there. And there's two pilot houses there, which is seven. And then there's this long uh, dry dock ship that they use to move around. But that's the winter fleet for 2020. This uh, setting right here, you're used to seeing, this is uh, Sonny's restaurant and Bridge Up Brewing. Of course, our slip is right over there, but it's a little bit different this time of year. Old steering wheel is off. I did have uh, one of the guys from Skipper Buds come over this morning and let me borrow their puller. Uh, he was here, kind of helped me do that so I didn't video any of it. But uh, there's the new steering wheel. Looks so much better here at the helm. Really, really happy with this. Let me see if I can. Get a better shot with better light from back here. All right, so I'm gonna work on getting uh, the red part of the boat here, the gel coat polished up. First thing I'm gonna do is uh, just spray it down with some water just to knock off the dust. Um, and then I'll cut it with the 1000 first. Probably just do a little test patch back here because this is actually the worst of it. So I might just do a little section right here with the cutting compound and the polishing compound, see how it looks before I move on to the rest of it. All right, I spread some of the uh, Aqua Buff 1000 on here. It's really gritty stuff. You can actually see the grit. So it's gonna cut for sure. So you just wipe it on with a cloth, mist it a little bit. And then buff it. I think I spray a little mist on, on the buffer and uh, we'll give this a, a test run here. Massive difference. Um, that's just with the cutting compound. It looks so much better. I mean, all this was cloudy in through here. And if we will go down, you can actually see the line right there where I stopped. So that's the test section and that's yet to be touched so i actually think i'll probably just go ahead and continue with the cutting compound all the way down and then come back and do the polish wow that's impressive this this stuff is awesome i mean the cloudiness is gone it shines, and this is just the compound. I mean, it looks so much better. It's collecting dust very quickly, but otherwise it looks great. I cannot, I, this scratch here, I'm having trouble getting out. I have to work on that a little bit more, but it's not a scratch, it's a rubber from the, uh, from the dock. I bumped the dock right there last summer. But otherwise, man, it looks so good. Time to put a polish on it. All right, so time to do a little bit of polish. I'm just gonna take what's in the cap here, use that up. I'm just gonna do a little spot back here. 
and see what it makes, uh, how much of a difference polish makes. All right, with it uh, polished, I'll take a rag and just kind of wipe everything nice and smooth. You can see the dust. Well, maybe you can't, but it's, it picks up so much dust from the static. So one thing I've learned about this polish is Aquabuff um, polish and compound, it does not like to be dry. So, if you're using it, keep things wet. And there is so much static. Look at this. It's all dust. Goes from shiny to dusty very quickly. So anyway, uh, I'm gonna finish polishing the boat and we'll wrap this video up shortly. I'm only gonna do this side of the boat today um, and then I'll come back um, another, another couple of days, do the other side red and then do the white. The white's gonna suck, but it's gotta be done. It's really, really bad. So, chalky, shiny, dusty. All right, well, I'm gonna have to wrap this up and get out of here, um, but uh, red is done on this side. I did uh, just get started here on the white just to see what it looks like, but um, obviously you can see the line right there. The uh, compounding is doing its job beautifully. So you can actually, yeah see the reflection on the white there you go into this part here it's just totally chalky and cloudy so super happy with this polish and uh i'll make another trip up here to finish the finish the other side of red and do the entire top side that white's going to take a little while so it's going to have to be a completely separate trip so thanks for joining me on this video everybody hope you uh, enjoyed it hope you liked it hit the uh, like button if you did hit that subscribe button and uh, send me some comments all that stuff that i always say at the end of every video so hope you enjoyed this one and we'll see you next time on another episode of working on uh, motor vessel clifford thanks for watching the wisco butter channel happy boating everybody